with Aria and Luthien, and in this video we're going to go over something called the Engage Disengage game. These are dogs that have uh, liked to cuddle, boy does she like to cuddle, and they like to hang out together, but they got in a couple fights, they were doing some resource guarding, the Guardian mentioned. I don't know if it was actual resource guarding, I think that one dog just had something. She has a small dog and doesn't think she's a small dog and kind of picked a fight here. So, but, uh, but it's happened both ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you with Arian, Aria, um, and uh, I'm not even saying that right. Erwin. Erwin. Um, so basically, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a clicker for this. If you haven't already primed or loaded the clicker, you need to do that first. And if you don't use a clicker, use a marker word, you can use a marker word instead. So what we're going to do in a second is we're going to go ahead and the Chihuahua is going to be walking from this. You can't see it. There's this marker here to that window back and forth. So the idea is we want the dog walking perpendicular to the dog that's doing the exercise, which is Arwen right here. So what we're going to do is as soon as Arwen looks at Luthien, who I cannot remember the name for the saving uh, life of me, uh, but every time that Arwen looks at Luthien, he's going to click to say, I like you looking at the Chihuahua, then he's going to give a treat. And then they're going to keep on walking back and forth. And what we should start seeing is Arwen looking at Luthien right? faster and faster. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to have you go all the way back to the window first. Go ahead and call her to you. Arwen. Arwen. Give her a treat, right? I say your marker word as soon as she comes to you, give her a treat. Call her name Arwen. again. Arwen. No. Yes. And then get, pull out another one. So right there, that was too much time. So I want them like coming about every two seconds for about three or four treats. I want to kind of dial in her attention to you. So go ahead and try it again. Arwen. Yes. Yeah. And then we'll grab another one right away. Arwen. And then another one right away. There you go. There you go. All right, so we're gonna to try to do it here. Um, and uh, since he hasn't done this, uh, and I have, I might take over the leash, but we're gonna try how to do it. I'm gonna have you go ahead and walk over here, and you're watching as soon as, look, click, and then give that treat, perfect. And, and once you get here, turn around and walk back. Click. Very good. And notice he's got the clicker in his right hand with the end of the leash. This allows his left hand to be free. So wait for a look. Go ahead and walk towards us again. Click. And so what she's doing is she is disengaging. She's looking here, being rewarded for the look, and then disengaging to go and get the treat. So instead of conf uh, starting a fight, I see looking at the other dog as a positive, and then looking at the, away at the other dog gets me something positive as well. So instead of a dog staring at each other and becoming a fight, we're actually creating a, a, a good response. Now, I would normally ask the dog to sit, and I use that as an indicator. Can I get her to sit, but she doesn't know how to sit on cue yet? So, and I, when I ask the dog to sit, it's just an indicator to see how comfortable it is. Now see, uh, we're gonna talk about her body language a little bit. See her tail, see how it's parallel with the spine. That's a good body mechanic. See, it's a little bit lower now, we like that. See the ears right there when he, she turns towards him, the inside of the ear is facing forward. So if this is the outside front of the ear, this is the inside of the ear, she, her, she's turning her ears to show the inside of her ear to him, which is kind of a polite or humble body mechanic. And so your tail is a little bit low and the speed kind of comes up. There we go, look at that, click and reward. So that is something that uh, I didn't, I was talking about some body language, but what, that's the end, what we're looking for. Eventually she looks at the other dog and then looks away and is rewarded for looking away. Now we don't try to do that one too soon because we want the dog to look at the other dog uh, first and create that positive association by looking. But see how she's looking? And she's already starting to turn around and come back to him on her own. Now, right now, we're, the dogs are approximately about 10 or 12 feet apart. When I do this, I, I don't want this dog, the dog we're working with, to be uncomfortable. So if it's barking, lunging, twitchy, uh, baring its teeth, growling, we're too close. We want to get as close as we can with the other dog without her demonstrating that she's uncomfortable. So if she is giving us any of those indications, she's stiff, her mouth goes from open to close and she gets stiff, she holds her breath, she starts drooling, uh, her body gets stiff, her ears go back, her tail goes up. Uh, there can be a lot, multitude of different body language. And, but the idea is once we recognize what her body signals, body language signals are, if we notice the first thing she does when she's uncomfortable is her ears rotate forward and she closes her mouth. When we see that, then we can invite the other dog to move away or move her away and increase the distance. So right now we're starting, we're about 12 feet apart. 
And as we practice this, now the dogs are not cooperating as you can see, um, but uh, we have enough space to make sure that everybody stays safe. We would might practice this one for about two to five minutes, always end on a good one. And anytime she looks at you, click and give her that treat for that as well, because she's disengaging, she's doing something we like. So basically after a while, what we'll see is she's gonna start checking in with us more and more often because that gets her the attention. Right now the click is, she, she, the click is indicating she did what we wanted, but it's causing her to also turn away. So the idea is we have, we're start off at 12 feet, maybe we do this for five minutes, the next time we go to 11 feet and practice again. Then next time 10 feet. We gotta go slow enough where the dog doesn't perceive it to be much of a difference and is comfortable continuing on. If the dog start, won't sit, if your dog knows how to sit, or they start getting engaging those body mechanics that you don't, that indicate that it's uncomfortable, then we should stop, increase the distance, always, always, always end on a positive. So we want the, the, the last repetition to be one of the best ones because that's the brightest memory the dog's gonna have. So, and right now we're practicing in the backyard Right now we're in, sh we're in sunlight and it's pretty damn hot. So that could tire the dogs out. If there's a baby crying next door, if there's a siren going on, there's construction, uh, a man with a weed eater, those things can trigger dogs. And so be aware of your environment when you're doing this, make sure you're not practicing with additional elements that make it harder. Now, right now we're practicing in the backyard. Next time we might practice where, where she is over here and the other dog's over here. Next time we might flip it this way. The idea is to practice with a lot of variety. And eventually after practicing outside and getting a pretty close distance, then we might do this inside. And when we do it inside, we would go back to a greater distance because there are a lot less distractions inside. Now, this is what we call the engage-disengage game, which is a great thing that you can do to start building up positive associations. When you have two dogs that have gotten along before and suddenly stop getting along, we wanna recreate situations where they can actually have a positive or communal positive experience. Walking them together is a great way to do this um, because they're distracted by the walk. Now, it's been so hot, the guardians haven't been doing this, but I would like to see the guardians walking the dogs twice a day together, these two dogs. And, uh, and when I beam together, we're gonna have human, human, and the dogs on the outside. Now, you might have to be across the street to begin with, but as we walk, gradually we're gonna get closer and closer, not on one walk. This might be several walks, but eventually it gets to the point where it's human, human, dogs on the outside, and eventually then the humans can move far apart and put the dogs on the inside, but make sure you keep that buffer. And there's never anything wrong with increasing distance. It's not a negative, and it might take you a lot more practice before you get to this. Um, so walking them together uh, twice a day, even if it's only like a 10 minute walk each time, they're practicing smelling each other, seeing each other, hearing each other, but not having the pressure of actually have to interact with each other. We'd also like the guardians to pick and choose their battles. If um, the dogs have been exercised and they're pretty mellow and there's not a lot of stuff going on in the house, that's a wonderful time to have them in the room together. But the guardians are a little bit worried about this. And so if you are worried, you could trigger a response. So we can take a leash like there, and what we do is you wrap the leash around the leg of a couch or something, and run it through the handle, and then attach the dog's leash on this side of the room, and you do the same thing on that side of the room. Now, if they're pulling on the leash, that's not something we wanna do. That means that we're, they're too close and they're not ready for that level yet. But, and I usually don't like to use a leash if there's any tension on a leash, because that can amplify their reaction. But we wanna create a safe environment. Another way to do this would be to set up a barrier. One of my coworkers, Laura, would be very unhappy if I didn't mention setting up a barrier. Because a barrier allows us to escape using a leash, which can add some tension. Now, some dogs do better with a leash than a barrier, like shepherds, but usually the, the barrier is gonna be the best way to do it. We have a chain link fence over here, you can't see it off camera, but having dogs on either side of that chain link fence is a great way to do it as well because the dogs can't get to each other so we know it's safe but it's also healthy for the humans i know my dog can't get to the other dog so if the leash breaks a fight is not going to happen so i don't feel apprehensive and i can't the dog can't sense that because our emotions can absolutely contribute to what's going on so when the dogs are calm and relaxed whether it's the time of the day after exercise or whatever it is we want to bring them together either through a barrier or with tethers where they're not ten when there's no tension on the leash if it's tether if it's tension on the leash you have to go to a barrier and we want to grab and the goal is not to get them next to each other just to have them in the room together doing a positive thing. Now dogs uh, release endorphins when they lick or chew. So another thing I'd like the guardians to do is once a day, get a lick mat for each dog and have them on opposite sides of the room behind a barrier or on the tether and providing peanut butter so they're sitting there licking, licking release those endorphins. So they're actually not only practicing being together, they're practicing feeling really groovy when they're together. So the more we can build in positive associations and gradually get those dogs together, we want to get the dogs back together again. But for these dogs, because they fought over a resource, if there's any bones, we wanna remove those. If there's any, uh, any activity that's gonna add stress, we wanna not practice at that time. Or if the dog's are full of energy, we don't practice at that time. 
If you only get two minutes of quality practice, that's better than having 20 minutes of uh, quality practice followed by one minute of bad practice be, uh, or uh, the dog's reacting because that brightest memory is the last. And that's what they're going to remember. So I want the guardians to kind of look for things that they can do. We can also train the dogs in the room together with one dog train, one guardian training one dog on this side, one guardian training the other side. We often do something called pair treating. This is something that you have to be careful about where uh, when, this would be something you would only get to after you've got a lot of progress on all the other stuff I've talked about, where I have a treat in each hand and I help both dogs sit, mark a word, release the treat, take a step back, sit, mark a word, release. We're treating them and they're both doing the same activity together and they're interested in treat against their nose. They're not trying to take each other's dog's treat. Now remember, if there is a bully stick or if there is a night kneecap or food, these dogs should not be together for these sort of things because unless we can directly supervise it and we would gradually work our way up there. This might be something we might need to work on a follow-up session on. I wanna see how the Guardians practice on uh, the stuff that we cover in this video we can build on in the future one. All right, I'm gonna help, I need help with the names. This is um, Arwen and this is Luthien. And these are some tips on how you can use the engage-disengage game as well as some other tips on helping dogs practice being together in a positive way.